I just want to welcome everybody here tonight to the family of boxes that we can all see each other. And I'm so happy to see all of you. I would love to be talking to each one of you in person. That would be great, but it is wonderful to be together. Um, and I just, I'm excited about tonight. I know it's been a hot day, it was 90 here. I'm sure uh, you guys, if you've been out, I didn't really want to be outside very uh, long, but um, I'm excited we can be together tonight and continue our study in the book of Colossians. I want to begin with a prayer. Um, I've got a few people that I want to pray specific prayers for. And so if you'll bow with me, please. Father, we just come to you tonight uh, to thank you so much for this time that we can be together. It's so good to see the smiles and to hear um, just the chatter, God, we love being together. Uh, thank you so much for the love and the relationships that you've given us. Uh, Father, we're so grateful for each other and we miss each other in person, but we're so excited about being able to be back together soon, God. Father, we just wanna thank you and pray uh, some prayers, Father. We pray for uh, Lisa Daniel's mom, who's going to be having a heart procedure this week. We pray that you'll watch over her and be with her and strengthen Lisa as she uh, tries to serve and help her God. I also pray for Lisa's cousin, Brian, who's battling cancer. We pray that you'll be with him and uh, the person that lives near him who's in the church that's reaching out to him. I pray that you'll bless that God and open Brian's heart. Father, I just wanna pray for Joanne. We thank you so much for blessing her recent heart procedure. We pray that you'll continue to strengthen her. We pray for her hand, God, that that will get better, what she's going through with the tendonitis. And we pray for uh, the doctors to know what is best for her to do with her eye, God. We just thank you so much for her. We love her and we pray that you will bless each of these things, God. We also pray for Denise Pratz's son-in-law, God, please be with him, that he can get well and uh, that Father will get good news on him. We just pray for him. Father, we also pray for Dot uh, as she has a biopsy this Friday. We pray that it will be normal. Uh, we just pray, God, that you will watch over her. We love her so much. Father, we know there are many more needs. I pray that we can always pray for one another and lift one another up in prayer to you. Father, I pray for all those who are grieving, loved ones, God. We have... Uh, so many, Father, uh, I know the Carvels just lost Dave's mom. I pray that you will comfort him and his family, God. And I pray that you will comfort everyone who has faced loss uh, in extended family and in their own family, God. Please strengthen us as we grieve. And Father, we just thank you that we can study uh, Colossians tonight. I pray that you will really bless this time and open our hearts and minds as we look into your word. We pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. I have no audio or video. Okay. Mm. Mm. That is Teresa Schmidt. Let's see if we can mute, there we go. Okay, can everybody hear me? Great. <clears throat> So tonight we are going to be uh, focusing on chapter two to continue in chapter two. Um, we're gonna finish the chapter tonight. And you know, Colossians is an amazing epistle that helps to anchor us in our roots of Christianity. Um, it helps us to have a deep focus on Jesus. And the first two chapters are more explaining our Christian doctrine or theology of what we believe. The last two chapters are more practical about how we are to live as Christians. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on in the next cl classes that we have, the last three. So we're gonna to continue tonight in Colossians 2. And you know what? We're gonna use our Bibles. So if you wanna use you have a Bible near you, or if you want to use your phone, or if you want to listen along, whatever is fine with me, but we're going to do it the old fashioned way tonight, um, which is, is good. But anyway, we're going to begin in verse six. So read with me here in verse six, it says in chapter two, so then 
just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. You know, I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and I use it so much to encourage people, and I write it in cards to encourage them, especially on someone's spiritual birthday or even their baptism day, you know, because this, this verse kind of says it all, what we're all about, you know, um, and my first point of what I want to talk about is just, I want you to remember your decision. I want you to think about the decision you made when you became a Christian, when you received Christ Jesus as Lord. You know, we, can, we always need to look back and remember that day and what it was we were deciding. You know, it says that you received Christ Jesus as Lord. Now this word received is the Greek word paralambano which means to take with oneself or yes, and to join oneself as an associate or a companion. I love that word companion. We are called to be connected with Jesus as a companion and Lord. And the word Lord, which is the Greek word kurios, means he to whom a person or thing belongs which has the power of deciding. So we received Jesus wholeheartedly as our greatest companion of whom we belong to. I belong to Jesus. Think about that. You can say that too. You belong to Jesus. You know, he goes with me and helps me to make every decision in my life. That's his, his desire, to be, to be my companion in everything. He is our loving and shepherding Lord. You know, before I made my decision, July 15th, 1981, um, I made this decision, but before this time that I made Jesus my Lord, I made all my decisions 100% based on what I wanted to do or had to do. I never thought about what Jesus really wanted me to do, honestly. Even though I was a churchgoer, that was not what I thought about. I thought about what I wanted. I didn't look to Jesus. He wasn't my companion. As a result, my life was hit or miss, up and down. You wish and hope for the best. You know, that's the way I lived life. I'm sure you can relate. You know, I was pretty empty and depressed by my choices. You know, it, it's not an easy way to live. And I know the Bible describes it as the empty way of life. That's what we've been rescued from by our dear companion, Jesus. You know, this verse helps me to see how vitally important it is for us to continue to look to him always as our companion and Lord. He wants to walk with you. He wants to help you with little decisions, big decisions, everything you're feeling. You know, just in five minutes of my day, I can feel a myriad of so many things. Anxiety, worry, fear, doubt, I, needs, things I've forgotten. There are so many things that we carry, right? Every day, even in just five minutes. Jesus wants to be there. You know, he wants us to look to him to carry the load that we carry. And in verse seven, it says that we are rooted and built up in him, that we need to be rooted and built up in him. Now, rooted means deeply and firmly embedded and ingrained. That's the way we need to be with Jesus. You know, I love this time of year. I know that you do. I wish you all could see um, in my backyard and it, it was here when we moved, but there's this beautiful red azalea 
that's just blooming. And I know it's not gonna last that long. So I keep looking out my window. I've taken a picture of it. I just, I love it. I love this time of year where all the flowers are growing. We're planting flowers. I'm sure some of you have planted a garden. You have plants and flowering plants and you know the drill. You have to water those plants. You know, I, I have a plant on my back deck and I'm constantly thinking about it. I look outside I, and Jimmy and I take turns watering it. Um, because if you miss one day, that plant is gonna suffer. It's gonna wither and it, its roots could dry up. That's, what we're, that's why we as disciples of Jesus need to be rooted in Jesus. We need to be watered constantly by God's word by prayer, by spending time with God. How are you doing in this season of life at tending to your own roots? Are you being fed by God's word daily in prayer so that you're deeply embedded in Jesus and strengthened in the faith as you were taught? You know, teaching from God's word strengthens and fortifies our faith. You know, it's so good for us to, to, you know, hear God's word taught or read, you know, God's word strengthens our faith. It helps us to, to uh, be strong. Now, the last part of this verse in seven, we're going to hold on to, I'm not even going to read it. We're going to finish it in a little bit. So I want us now to look in verse, we're going to read verse nine through 15, okay? It says, for in Christ, all the fullness, and I have skipped, just so you know, I didn't forget, we're gonna come back to eight, but we're gonna begin right now in verse nine, okay? For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power, and authority in him you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature not with a circumcision done by the hands of men but with a circumcision done by Christ having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through your faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive in Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Wow. Wow. You know, as I look at you, I want you to think about this, that you have fullness in Christ. And in Christ, the deity lives in him and we have fullness in him. We were created in the image of God. And when we become Christians, when we're buried with Jesus and baptized into him, we are given fullness in Christ. And the, the analogy that is used is an interesting one for us as women because none of us have been circumcised. Most of, I think everyone knows what circumcision is. Um, that is one blessing in being a woman um, that we don't have to face that. But you know, circumcision was the sign of God's people in the Old Testament, as we know. And the Jews were circumcised on the eighth day. This was, you know, God's sign for them. Um, and we are circumcised by Jesus as he cuts off our sinful nature, the putting off of our sinful nature. And this circumcision is done by Jesus. When we are buried with him in baptism in verse 12, 
and raised with him through our faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. You know, it's, it's amazing as we think about this, you know, um, Jesus put off our sinful nature in baptism. And before that, we were dead in our sin. We were completely dead. You know, there's many scriptures that talk about that. Ephesians 2, you were dead in your sins. We, we know that we were not even alive spiritually. But when we were buried with Jesus in baptism, God made us alive in Christ. And he raised us from the dead, just as he rose Jesus from the dead after he died on the cross. God circumcised our sinful nature and made us alive. And he forgave us all our sins. He canceled the written code that stood against us, that condemned us, that made us dead spiritually. You know, this is so incredible um, and it's deep. It, honestly, it's hard for us to conceive what God has done for us through Jesus. We actually just have to accept it and pray that God will help us to grasp his love. There's a verse that I want to read, um, one of my favorites that I think really helps me. I, I'm sure you feel the same way. And you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it so you can listen. It's in Romans 5, in verse 6 through 8. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, I love this verse because it helps me to feel and know the depth of God's love for me um, and how little I deserve the love. You know, I'm, I'm not, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. I didn't deserve Jesus to die for me. I didn't deserve that. You know, and it helps me to understand and feel his grace. To, to know that that God found me when I was dead in my sin and in the emptiness and the pain and the misery that I was in. And he made me alive in Christ and he gave me fullness in Christ. You know, I want to encourage you to meditate on these scriptures. Take time to think about them and to go through them and read them and to, to grasp try to pray, God, help me to grasp what this means. Because I think it's easy for us to hear these words and not really let them sink in and, and to feel the depth of God's grace and love for us and what he did through Jesus and how we are all given that fullness in Jesus uh, that God made us alive through him. The second thing that I wanna talk about is we have to remember that the world wants to pull us back down into the pit constantly. You know, we, did, we just talked about the really good news, it's wonderful, but honestly, there is a lot of bad news that we all have to face. Bad news from our past, bad news on the television, bad news, in every day. Um, and we're going to look in verse eight. We're going to look at what Satan tries to do because he actually is the one that wants to pull us down. And in verse eight, it says, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Now jump with me over to verse 16. It says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality 
however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you for the prize. Such a person goes into great detail about what he has seen and his unspiritual mind puffs him up with idle notions. He has lost connection with the head from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the basic principles of this world, why, as though you still belonged to it, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish with use because they are based on human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Now, there's a lot here, and we're not going to get, we don't have the time to get into all of these scriptures with any depth, but you certainly can if you want to. And I know Kevin Manning has done an a very deep um, study and created commentary on this, if anyone is interested. Jimmy and I talked about that. If for those who want to study even more extensively, you can, and we're gonna offer you that. But the main thing that we need to see here is that Satan wants to pull us away from Jesus. He wants to pull us back into the world into the human traditions and the basic principles of this world and make us, and, and the reason is, is he wants us to feel condemned and to be condemned. That's basically what the reality is. He wants to, to as it says here, he wants us to lose connection with the head, which is Jesus. That's his goal. He wants to cut off your supply to Jesus, whatever in whatever way he can. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to weaken you. He wants you to follow the basic principles of this world. The depression, the emptiness that comes with the, the world's view of things. And the, the, the view that God gives us is a, a, a view of, of Christ and his life and freedom. You know, we um, in verse 19, it says that, God is the one that makes us grow. God, he is the one that helps us to grow as we are in, in the body of Christ, as we focus on Jesus, we grow. But it's not anything that we do or that the world tells us we must do to earn anything from God. You know, um, I think in so many ways we can feel, um, like we're not enough, that we're not doing enough, that we need to do more. I know for me, you know, I, I'm not doing enough to please God. I'm not spending enough time in prayer. There's so many things that we can, that can condemn our hearts as disciples of Jesus. But let me just tell you this, you will never, ever, ever do or be enough because that's not our focus. You can't focus on you. You've got to realize that Jesus is our focus. Jesus has got to be our reality. In verse 17, it says the, the reality, however, is found in Christ. So whatever is distracting you or pulling you away from that, you got to realize it's from Satan. And for each one of us, it, it may be different things. Whatever's pulling us down, pulling us back into the pit of despair. Um, one of my favorite verses in Galatians 5 in verse 1, I love this verse and I think about it a lot. I need this verse and I want to share it in 5 and verse 1. It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You know, we were slaves to sin. 
We were slaves to Satan and our lives were dead. But Jesus has set us free. He has set us free. It's all about freedom. God wants to free us every day. He wants to free us to know and feel his love. He wants to help us to love others. He wants to help us to love ourselves and to be free of the, the condemnation that we've lived with, the shame, the guilt, the burden, the yoke of slavery to sin. Jesus wants to free us from that. He doesn't want us to, to go around feeling guilty and burdened with a yoke of sin. We died with Christ in verse 20 to the basic principles of this world. We don't have to listen to this world anymore. We don't have to be bound by this world and by the, the rules of this world. We are free. And I just wanna encourage you when you are feeling discouraged and guilty and burdened and ashamed and think about this. It is for freedom that Christ has set me free. I'm in Christ. I have the fullness of Christ. I'm rooted in Christ. I'm strengthened in my faith in Christ. The reality is Jesus. Jesus is the one that we've got to focus on. He is our standard in every way, you know, period. You are free in Christ. And I want us now to look back in chapter two in the beginning. We're going to finish out. I'm going to read one more time. Verse six through seven. I want to encourage you to memorize these two scriptures. Verse six through seven. It's, it's powerful. It's, if you haven't already, many of you probably already know it from memory. But in verse six, it says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. That's what I want to close out with us talking about. Overflowing with thankfulness. I think there's someone who is not muted. I don't know who it is. If you could check, there's music. Um, if somebody, I don't know if there's any way, but anyway, when we are putting verse six and seven into practice, the result is overflowing with thankfulness or gratitude. What does it mean to overflow? Well, I want you to think of a reservoir that holds water. When it rains a lot or the snow and mountains melt, the water flows over the edge. When a dam spills over because of excess water, it is a powerful spectacle to behold. You know, guys, let's see if we can figure out who, oh, there we go, I figured out. Okay, thank you, God. Um, and that is what this word overflow in the original language means, to be in excess, to have more than enough, to superabound and overflow. This is what God wants for you and me to be in Christ, to be overflowing with gratitude, to have excess gratitude, to superabound in gratitude. We can't hold it back. We can't hold it in. It is powerful. Is the most powerful thing in your life gratitude? Are you overflowing with gratitude? That's what God wants for each one of us. And you know, when we're overflowing with gratitude, we're happy. We're our happiest. I like to believe that as Christians, our superpower is gratitude. It's our superpower. No matter what we face, the circumstances we have to endure, the struggles and pain we experience here, in Christ, we can thank God. You know what, somebody...
Maria, I I'm can't muted. hear you. I muted everybody and you're muted now. So can you, yeah. Yes, yeah. perfect. And I'm gonna read that again. No matter what we face, the circumstances we have to endure, the struggles and pain we experience here, in Christ, we can thank God because we know that he will work it all for our good and he will draw us to him and that we have our great companion and Lord by our side, no matter what we face. Um, you know, I'm so thankful for the Saugus family group um, led by Joe and Karen Bureau. Jimmy and I have been joining them for the past months on Zoom and we even went to the Wazak's house last Wednesday night. It was so wonderful to see everyone. Um, and I am so inspired by these men and women, all of them. But I want to share about three tonight. One is Anne Marie D. Benedetto. You know, during this time, she has been working two jobs. She does adult care and she works in the meat department at Stop and Shop. She works hard. But, you know, she comes to our Zoom meetings and she was there last Wednesday. And I'm just so proud of her heart and how grateful she is to have a job and to be a part of God's family. And then I also want to share about Valerie Martinson. You know, all of us know and love Valerie. This past year, she lost her beloved mother and sister in one year. She also lost an aunt and a cousin and others. That's not all. I mean, she has faced so much grief, but you know, Valerie is so close to God and striving to get closer and is so grateful and is such an encouragement to others. Sometimes I just look at her and I stand in awe. I really do with all that she has gone through. And I'm so proud of her. And lastly, our little spark plug, Linda Gillis. You know, Linda found out this past year that she had cancer. She went through surgery and treatments for her cancer. She lost her hair, but you know, she always showed up even from her hospital bed in her gown, making us laugh, feeling her love and her giving spirit. She is overflowing with gratitude to God for so many things and God is helping her. She's getting closer to her biological family through this cancer. She is a sparkle of love and joy and above all laughter, which we all need that, don't we? Linda makes us laugh. You know, whatever you are facing right now, you are in Christ. You have the fullness of Christ. Stay rooted and built up in him. Don't lose your connection with him. And you will overflow with thankfulness. Remember, that is your superpower from God. At this time, we're going to break up into groups. And I want you to share about whatever touched your heart from these scriptures. Or what are you thankful for in Christ during this season in your life? Or how is thankfulness your superpower personally right now? So I hope, or anything that you want to share about. I just want us to have an awesome time. And before we close and break out, I just want to thank Ashley and Rose for the classes that they've already done. Such an awesome job. Thank you, Ashley and Rose. I am so grateful for each one of them. Actually, Rose is going to do another class for us. Thank you, Rose. I'm so excited about that. Um, so any, anyway, let's close out with a little prayer and then enjoy your fellowship together, okay? Father, we just thank you so much for your word and uh, just the way that it works in our hearts. Uh, it strengthens us, God. It helps us to focus on you and on your power. Father, and on your beloved son, God, that we have fullness in you because of him. We thank you so much for this time. I pray that you'll bless the discussion and the fellowship right now as we break into groups. We pray this on Jesus' name. Amen.